The CMAT FLP has been around for a while now and you should be familiar with it, but if you're not, check out our FLP video where we will discuss it in more detail. For those of you who are familiar with FLP, stick around because we're going to discuss a big question related to it, which is whether it's easier than the PQ route to qualification. Now, for full disclosure, I'm a CMAT FLP student, and at Astranti, we offer both the PQ route and the FLP, so there's no incentive for us to argue that one is easier or better than the other. What I can do is go through some quick information as an overview for those of you who aren't as familiar with FLP or are yet to choose between them. So the FLP was introduced by CMA for one real reason, to meet the increasing demand of students who wanted online learning, as well as digital platforms and an ability to learn at your own pace. Now, after this, it means that the FLP was put up alongside PQ rather than replacing it, and SEMA assures you that the FLP carries as much weight as the PQ does. SEMA worked extensively with employers to find out exactly what they wanted from a course and made sure that it fit all their requirements so that they will value it the same as a SEMA PQ qualification. In fact, on your CV, you could just put um, CGMA, fully qualified, and no employer is really going to ask you whether you studied it with FLP or PQ. So with that said, what are the main differences between the two? And what could lead someone to say that it could be easier than the PQ route? To do that, I'm going to show you what the CMFLP platform looks like with my own account, and we'll go through it together and show you where this narrative comes from, whether it's true or not, and how it will affect your studies. So this is the FLP platform. You can see here that there's foundational, operational, management, and strategic, just like there are for the PQ route. However, instead of objective test exams for each part, this is now split into different sections on the FLP platform. For example, E1 is now split into a module called Digital Finance, which itself is split into subgroups. The way you are assessed now is by going through a skill set on a particular topic. So for finance business partnering, they were um, explaining how to organize business, the types and common features of organizations, and the main functions of a business and how finance business partnering supports performance. And then at the end, you would sit a business simulation assignment. Now, some people may think that this method is easier because you do not have to sit an objective test exam at the end. Instead, you are tested by doing assessments throughout the um, learning, which are called knowledge checks, which help you to understand. So, for example, if we revisit this learning, you can see knowledge checks here about different areas of the syllabus. So for this one, for example, you would put groups into different boxes, depending on whether they provide a service or a product. So, for example, GAP provide a product and um, APMG provide a service. You would keep going through it like this, doing more knowledge checks throughout so that you are being tested as you learn, which many students find very helpful. At the end of um, the two skill sets, or however many there are for that particular level, you would sit a business simulation assignment. Now, this is meant to help prepare you for the case study, and in fact is why we have not seen a drop in um, case study results due to FLP. Many people thought that case study performance would drop as soon as FLP was introduced. However, this has not been the case, and it is perhaps due to these business simulation assignments. So for example, this one I'm not going to properly do, but can show you. And it says here that the sole purpose of the BSAs is to build your experience and confidence in applying what you have learned to real world scenarios. Now this is meant to help prepare you for the case study, but that is what you are going to do. And they take around 30 minutes to complete. So if we were to look at one, you would get a particular fake company such as Fragrantia, and you would answer questions based on it, using reference materials you have access to here. Similar to the case study, you'll get emails and will have attached reference materials, which will help you to answer these questions and prepare you for the case study. So you shouldn't face questions about whether this is easier. It's not, and it will test you just as much as the PQ exams would, just in a slightly different, more digital and modern way. So now that we've looked at the FLP platform, let's look at what our students thought about FLP after its first year of release. 
Remember, in some countries like Ireland, FLP has been around for quite a while now, but in other countries, it's just rolling out. So this insight is particularly useful for those of you who don't have people around you who've done FLP and want to know what real students think about it. So on this first slide, we see um, whether students are approving of the various changes that SEAM has made by introducing the FLP. And we see that students are on the whole broadly very in favor of these changes. Now, these changes aren't just FLP. It includes things like any time OT assessment. Um, but FLP is a very big thing SEMA has introduced, and therefore we can assume that this is a big part of the support for these changes. Next, we see that there's a rating of the different routes between each other, and with regards to the main topic of this video, we can see that uh, students really do believe that FLP will be easier to pass. Now, this isn't really because FLP is easier. It's probably more likely due to the ways that FLP is designed to help students in the modern age. So the fact that you can sit it at home, the fact that it's more flexible, you can sit modules in whatever order you like, um, you can build up to the case study. This is all things that probably are more likely to influence students' judgment, given that the syllabus hasn't changed. We then see different aspects of it, and you can see there that a big part of it is that it is better for learning and that people don't really believe it will make much difference to producing more competent accountants. There's a slight majority in favour of PQ, but this is not too substantial and it's likely just due to FLP being introduced recently. But there is an argument to then say that maybe PQ does help prepare people better. Maybe some people prefer sitting OT exams and really memorizing the syllabus that way. Next, there's this um, thing we have here about the effect on the reputation of the qualification. And you can see there's a very widespread people. What we can really gather from this is that even though um, a plurality believe they won't make much difference, people don't really know. It's too early in the life of FLP to really say what difference it will make. And therefore, we can't really say for sure whether students believe that it will massively change the qualifications reputation or not. It's too early to say. But early signs in countries like Ireland, where it has been out for longer, show that this hasn't really been the case so far. And SEMA has consulted extensively with um, employers. But we cannot be sure until we have seen many years of FLP in action. Then there is um, this poll which shows what qualification people would choose if they could start again, and a vast majority choose the FLP. Given it's designed for students, this perhaps isn't surprising, but it does show that people are in favour of FLP broadly. And finally, there is um, this particular survey which we did, which was about how do we expect employers to react? Again, people aren't really sure. So um, you can see the vast majority were in the middle. They weren't really sure whether uh, employees or employers would react very negatively or positively. People just think it won't make too much of a difference. And given what Seema said about employers it's talked to, this is likely the case. People will just see it as a different route to gaining the same CGMA qualification and status. So that brings us to the end of this um, quick highlights from our survey we did of our students on FLP, and we'll move back to the main video now. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found that useful just in finding out more about FLP and in seeing what students have thought about it. After watching it, do you have any thoughts about whether FLP is an easier route than PQ? This isn't just limited to those of you who haven't decided yet. For those of you who's, who've already studied PQ, what do you think about FLP being brought in? If you want more news on accountancy, follow Astranti uh, on our YouTube channel or our TikTok, our LinkedIn. We've got plenty of social media presence, our Instagram too, which will give you more information. And if you're interested in starting either the FLP or PQ or purchasing further courses, head over to astranti.com where you'll find all the information you need to make an informed choice. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in another Astranti video.